guys, welcome back to my channel. And today's video, I'll be talking about um, traveling Russia by car, van life in Russia, van dwelling in Russia, is it possible? And main differences between US and Russia in regards to traveling by car and van life and van dwelling and all of that fun. It should be an interesting video. I've done some research uh, since I've lived in both countries and I've traveled in both countries. I feel like I have enough knowledge to talk about it. I did talk to my brother who is currently traveling Russia by car right now and he has been here and traveled with me by car as well. So he also has some knowledge so we talked about that and I also asked some of my friends in Russia who's done big road trips in Russia to kind of give me a little bit more, more information, maybe something I don't know, something that I've missed so I can give you the most accurate information there is. Quick disclaimer, I have traveled in Russia a bit. I've never been dwelled in Russia. I never lived in the van in Russia. All this information is coming from my experience, my brother's experience, my friend's experience, and some of the things I found online. Don't take all this information like super, super seriously. Everybody's gonna have different experiences with traveling by car in Russia and in US. So this video is just my experience and some of my friends experiences in regards to traveling by car in Russia versus traveling by car in the US. If you were planning on going to Russia and traveling by car there, use this information to kind of guide you and help you, but don't think that this is going to be your experience 100%. Uh, you might experience something different, something better or something worse, who knows. This is just general information that I experienced and my friends experienced as well, and just take it as it is. Russia is a huge, huge country, just like US, and Russia has many weather climates, just like in US. There are parts of Russia that are going to be very cold, there's part of Russia that are going to be warmer, just like in the US. The main difference is temperature change and climate change in Russia is a lot harsher than in the US. For instance, uh, northern part of Russia and north eastern part of Russia experience very very harsh winters. The average low for those parts of the country in the winter time are like negative 40 Fahrenheit and in the summer times you might not even experience warm weather. Um, it might get up to 45 degrees Fahrenheit to maybe 60 Fahrenheit on rare occasions but for the most part it's not going to be warm at all. And when you go to southern Russia, the weather in the winter time is very similar to Pacific Northwest. It's very wet, it's a lot of rain, it might snow at least a few times a year, and it stays around 40 to 50 Fahrenheit, and there's definitely times we're gonna get below that and might snow. In the winter time, you're not gonna experience 70 degree weather like you can in the US in the southern states. If that, if you are living in the van or traveling in the van and sleeping in your van, those harsh winters are going to be tough. I'm not saying it's not possible to live in the van in Russia, but it's not going to be very comfortable. You might want to insulate your van as much as you can for the winter to try and stay warm. However, in the summertime, that insulation might make your van super super hot and make warm air escape a lot slower from your van making your van a lot hotter i remember when i first came to us and uh, started traveling around i thought to myself that the roads out here are amazing in us you know you go on the highway you drive between states and the roads might change from two lanes to five lanes for the most part the roads are nice and smooth you're not gonna see many potholes most of the roads are gonna have shoulders where you can kind of pull over and park in russia it's a whole different thing once you get outside of the major cities like moscow and st petersburg highways that go across the country or to different parts of russia most of them are going to be just a two-lane road one lane going each way and for the most of the time there's going to be no shoulder for you to pull over at and park your car if you need to a lot of times the road not going to even have lane dividing two lanes so it's going to be just pretty much a block of concrete in some parts of the russia especially southern russia when you go across part of the road is not even paved it's technically dirt road a lot of roads in russia will also have big potholes there's going to be a lot of big rocks on the roads 
cracks, you would have to go slow, you would have to be careful, you might want to bring a lot of tools with you in case something does happen so you can fix your car right there and then. Another thing in regards to roads, there's going to be no fencing for cattle, so a lot of times you would have to stop for cows and chickens and goats crossing the roads and kind of roaming around where in US most of the time there are some sort of fencing going on or cows tend to stand on one part of the road. Since I've been traveling in the US I never had to stop for any animal crossing the road. I've seen cattle on the side of the road, I've seen it in the fields, but I've never had to stop for them to actually cross the road. Not a very safe country. Oh my god, there's a spider. Ah! When I first tell people that I live in the van, the first thing I get asked is, what about your safety and security? Aren't you feel unsafe? Or aren't you afraid that somebody is gonna break into your van and harm you? And surprisingly, USA is pretty safe country. If you watch the news a lot, you might think that it's dangerous out there. And yes, yeah, so there are definitely gonna be bad people around. There's definitely gonna be bad neighborhoods and there's definitely a chance of something happening. But the chances of me getting harmed in the van versus me getting harmed if I live in the house are about the same. In fact, I feel a lot more secure and in control ever since I moved in into the van. And there's lots of reasons for it and I can definitely talk more about it in future videos if you want me to. But the main idea is USA is very, very safe country in comparison to other countries. In Russia, there are so-called road bandits. And you're not going to see them a lot. You might not even ever come in contact with them. But pretty much what those people do is they see that you're traveling in the van and you have a lot of stuff. They know you're traveling. They might follow you and steal your car, harm you. I had a few friends who traveled across Russia in about three weeks and in those three week period they've been followed by a car twice and nothing ever came of it. A lot of times those road bandits will target Russian citizens, cars that have Russian license plates on them, only because if a Russian citizen were to go missing or something happened, police might not take as much time investigating it as if it was a foreigner. When a foreigner goes missing, that is a whole international conflict and all of that stuff. So if you are going to do van life in Russia or you want to go and drive across Russia, I would suggest getting a car with a foreign license plate because you'll have less chances of running into those road bandits and anything happening to you. Russian police is kind of all over the board. There are definitely a lot of bad cops, but there are also some good cops. Once you get out of the big city, you might not see police at all until you get to the next town. A lot of times they will see that you're traveling and they'll pull you over for no apparent reason. A lot of times they'll just ask you for money. But there are some cops who are going to be nice and they're just interested in your life and what you're doing and they will ask you questions about your country and where you're from. Police is corrupt in Russia. I hear it's getting better, but once you get into like like Siberia and the smaller towns, they kind of run the show, so there's not much you can do. So if you are considering traveling across Russia, um, make sure to have some cash on you. Not too much, but at the same time enough to pay them in case you were to get pulled over or stopped. Even though I just talked about the road bandits and the cows being bad, Russian people are actually very nice and welcoming people. A lot of times when you travel across Russia and you go into smaller towns, the people who live in those small towns that you meet are going to be absolute gems. They're going to be super nice and welcoming and they're going to be very curious about your life and they might invite you to the house and feed you. A lot of people in Russia are very nice and welcoming and friendly despite what you might hear in the news or from the newspaper or from reading online articles. People talk a lot more about bad things that happen versus good things. So obviously you're gonna hear a lot more about the bad things that are happening in Russia versus good things and good people you can meet on the road. So don't let the road bandits and the cops discourage you from coming to Russia and traveling because most likely you're not gonna get attacked and you're gonna meet a lot of amazing and friendly people on your travels. 
So in US, as many of you know, there are gonna be rest stops along the highway. There's gonna be a gas station and small stores where you can refill on your food or stay the night. There's gonna be a lot of overnight parking that you can use, whether it's Walmart or a rest stop. For the most part, there's gonna be a stop at least every 30 to 60 miles for you to rest and refuel. In Russia, it's a little bit different. In western part of Russia, so Moscow, St. Petersburg, and all around there and closer to Europe, you'll see that the roads are gonna be a little bit better. There are some rest stops. They're somewhat new. They were built within the last few years where you can stay overnight. They have bathrooms. Some of them have showers. Some of them might have little restaurants. You'll see more like small cafes and restaurants along the roads where you can stop and get some food or some stores to buy some food. For the most part, it's pretty easy. However, when you go to the east of Moscow and eastern Russia, it changes. You might go a full day without seeing a single town or a single gas station or a single store to buy food or get some gas. So if you're traveling that way, make sure you have plenty of food and gas on you, just in case. If you live in a van, the space is very limited. So if you do have a fridge in the van, it most likely it's gonna be pretty small and it's hard to have a lot of food on you. So when you are traveling in Eastern Russia, that might be a challenge, especially if you're not going to be seeing store stop for a full day to refill on your food and gas. So that's something to think about is to make sure you have enough with you in case that happens. There's going to be no rest stops at all. There's going to be no really restaurant or cafe on the way. If you are passing a small town, there might be a little cafe on the road where you can stop and get food. Most of the time it's just a house with the old Russian grandma cooking food on a typical house stove for you. Just make sure to think about food and gas ahead of time. Now, when traveling in US, it's not really a problem. I never once thought about okay, I need to make sure I have enough food for two days because I might not see a town or have an extra canister of gas with me because I know there's going to be stops somewhere. You know, if I'm going camping or going to in the mountains, they're going to bring more food and extra gas just in case. But besides that, U.S. is very comfortable and safe in that regard. western side of Russia, so like Moscow, St. Petersburg, and west towards Europe, there's going to be rest stops that you can sleep on. However, in the eastern Russia, especially once you get to Siberia, there is not going to be no rest stops. There's going to be no camping. And I forgot to mention, in western part of Russia, so like starting in St. Petersburg and west all around St. Petersburg, you might find some camping spots you can do. But in eastern part of Russia, there's going to be no camping and no rest stops. Well, you would have to find a wild place to sleep, whether it's in the woods, somewhere off the road. And that could be pretty dangerous, especially if you are in the middle of nowhere, and especially if there are road bandits around or bad people around. Sleeping in the towns and the small cities in Russia, you might not be hassled or harmed, but some people like to tag vans in Russia, especially in the smaller towns. Usually they target vans only, so like Vanagans or Chevy vans or whatever van you have. They might just spray paint them, put some dirt in it. I don't know why, but it does happen. If you don't care about that, then you can sleep in the city. If you do care about that, you might want to go way outside of the city and find some secluded spot. Just make sure it's safe. There is wildlife in Russia. You might see a bear or a mountain lion or whatever it is. So be careful when selecting a spot to sleep in the wild. To summarize traveling in Russia by car versus US, there are going to be positive and negatives. I know after watching this video you might think that it's very dangerous to travel in Russia by car and it is a little bit more dangerous than US for sure, but Russia is beautiful country. The nature is amazing, the architecture is amazing if you're in the bigger cities. There's a lot of culture, there's a lot of history, and it is an experience. You might have to go through dirt roads and big potholes and 
you might have to pay off a police or you will find some amazing people in in meet some amazing families who will invite you in their house and feed you so it's a whole experience on its own if you are thinking about doing that just make sure to prepare do your research try to be safe think ahead and you'll be just fine there are pros and cons to traveling in russia just like there are pros and cons to traveling in us they're just different they're just very different it's different culture it's different country so, i really hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found this information useful and helpful if you are planning on traveling to russia and either staying there for a week or two in the city or traveling by car or by train i hope this information can be useful to you and i hope you keep an open mind and just know that there's a lot of positives and a lot of beauty in the country and don't forget to like and subscribe leave me a comment down below if you have any more questions about russia or my experiences or anything like that don't be afraid to leave a comment i love seeing all of your comments and your feedback and responding to you guys also if you're new to this channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button don't forget to also click that bell button next to it and ensure that you will get notifications every time i post a new video i hope to see you guys soon